Okay, this time we have a moving conductor in a magnetic field, but we're going to add another conducting wire. And let's say we connect one rail to another. Okay, through some kind of conducting metal here. In doing this, we create a pathway for current to flow in a loop, potentially, if the conditions are right. So, in the last example, we showed that according to right-hand rule of pointing our pointer finger in the direction of velocity and pointing the middle finger up, the thumb points out of the page, which would cause positive charges to want to move. They would want to go this way according to the analysis. But now they have an ability to not just flow to the end of the conductor, but they could go all the way around the loop to come back to the negative side of the bar. So see this side became positively charged in the previous problem and this side became negatively charged because of the motion of the object. But now what happens is the charges have the ability to flow in this loop and they certainly will. Why? Because this side we determined was at a higher potential than the other side. We said, for example, that there would be 7.04 volts, uh, like a 7.04 volt difference between this point, so this is 0 volts, and this point here, which is at 7.04 volts, let's say. So that means our current is going to want to definitely flow. And we have many ways of figuring out the direction of that current flow. One of them is just using this right hand rule. Like if you can use the right hand rule to show that positive charges in that bar will want to flow down, like, you know, out of the page basically toward us then that's one way to show that there would be a current created in this situation. But there are actually other ways to figure that out as well. So just to draw it, I'm going to, I'm going to draw it in two dimensions in a minute here, showing that the magnetic field in that section is out of the page. All right, so let me redraw it. This is the basic setup. We've got a magnetic field. And we have a moving bar. This bar is moving to the right. All right, so the other way to find the direction of the um, flow of current is using a thing called Lenz's Law. So what Lenz's Law says is this. The induced voltage in a loop will be determined by the change in magnetic flux with time. Alright, so we want to analyze the area 
of the loop. Like that's part of Lenz's law. This is the area that field is flowing through. And it has an area A. And there's a field B flowing through it. Now we saw in the past that there was a way to calculate magnetic flux. Right? So it would be B A cos theta. So as you can see, according to Lenz's law, what it's basically saying is if there is any change in the magnetic flux with time, then a voltage will be induced. And in this situation, that voltage would create a current in the loop. Okay, so if the B changes, or the A changes, or the theta changes, there could potentially be this induced voltage, right? So in this situation, the area is the thing that's changing. Okay, so the area of the loop is going to change with time. All right, so this is a little tricky, so bear with me. <laughs> All right, so first thing we want to do is figure out in what direction is the field and the flux, you know? The field points out of the page. So I'm going to say that the existing field and flux are flowing out of the page. That's important to take note of. Okay. Lenz's law says that a current will be created in order to basically stop the change, like to counteract it. So right now, if the bar were to just move to the right, then that flux out of the page would be increasing. Right? Because the area would be getting bigger. So if the area gets bigger, then the flux gets bigger. But Lenz's law says that the current will not allow that to happen. <laughs> what will happen is there will be a current induced in the wire in order to stop the change, is the idea. So you want to figure out if you need an induced flux that's coming out of the page or into the page. Like Those would be the choices in this case. Now, since the original existing flux is going to be increasing, we definitely wouldn't want to put more dots here because that would make the situation even worse when it comes to like the increase. Instead, no, what we need is we need X's created to stop the change. The existing dots are the B existing, I'll call it. And the red X's are the B induced. Two different ideas. So we want to use the right hand corkscrew rule now on the wire to determine what the direction of current is. So you just imagine grabbing a hold of the wire with the right hand and you want to do it such that the field created by your current is directed into the page. So you just grab a hold of the wire with the fingers pointing into that loop here. This causes the thumb to point to the left. Okay. 
So that is an alternative way for finding what is called the induced current. And you want it to agree with the same analysis that we had done above. See, using this right-hand rule, we determined that positive charges would flow downward here, and they would cycle around in this type of current. And so this analysis with Lenz's law has to agree with that and tell the same story, basically. So it's a way of checking, like to make sure that you did it correctly.